Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to today's lesson, which will answer the essential question, what happened at the Boston Massacre and the Boston Tea Party? Um, that could be an essential question across the top, especially if you have a new page of notes. But if you're just working off an old page of notes, just make sure you have the correct left side questions, please. So let's get to it. The Boston Massacre, and this is the second part of uh, lesson number four. Uh, the Boston Massacre uh, was an event that occurred in Boston in the year 1770. Uh, at this point, Britain had passed the Stamp Act, it had passed the Quartering Act, it had passed the Townsend Acts, and all three of them had been repealed, but tension between the British and the colonists was at a very fever pitch. Uh, Britain's actions and choices really began to upset the colonists. And so by the time 1770 came around, there was one British soldier for every five colonists. So imagine walking around Salem and seeing soldiers roaming the streets pretty much there to keep you in check uh, and, and the feeling that that would create. That, that, that's basically what was going on in um, Boston at the time. So on March 5th, 1770, uh, there was a small riot on Boston Comet, and it ended up becoming quite violent. Um, it started with uh, colonists hurling insults at British soldiers, and then they started hurling rocks and snowballs at the British soldiers. Uh, these were very young British soldiers. They were far from home. They were green, and um, basically one or more of them freaked out and opened fire on the crowd. Um, and chances are uh, it was accidental. But what happened um, became a big deal. British soldiers opened fire on the crowd after being pelted with insults, rocks, and snowballs. And in the end, you ended with five dead colonists. Uh, and of course, Paul Revere, who was at the Boston Massacre, made a famous engraving uh, that went viral and was seen all over the colonies. And so even though only five colonists were killed, uh, if you saw this engraving, you would think that it was a lot more intense than that. And here is that engraving. So if you look at that, you're thinking to yourself, that looks like a lot more than five people died to me. And this is before radio, this is before television, pretty much people opened up their newspaper within a week or two of this happening, they see that, and it creates an impression in the mind. And that impression in the mind becomes something that you can use to motivate people to feel a certain way. Uh, that is exactly what Paul Revere and the colonists did. And so now I'm going to show you a video clip from the movie John Adams of the Boston Massacre. Uh, I'm going to skip past the first few minutes and just get to the point where uh, Mr. Adams sees the massacre. Uh, you're also going to see Paul Revere towards the end of this scene, and he's going to be the guy who gets uh, pretty animated about what he's seen. So let's go ahead and take a gander at that. not going to let me go full screen with it, so I'm going to skip to right about here. I had it. Oh, no, that is hard to say. There were no witnesses, and the beast refused to testify for some reason. Trying to breathe through. There, can you breathe? 
right now. Did you go to the farm? Yeah. Mr. Bass is sending a cord of wood. And there's a fence down the south field. So that, ladies and gentlemen, was a dramatic depiction of the Boston Massacre. And you should also note that one of the victims was an African American. So ladies and gentlemen, our next left side question is, what was the Boston Tea Party? Uh, and this was a further example of tensions rising between the British and the colonists, and evidence that they were not exactly singing from the same sheet of music. Now. Video yet. So, in 1773, Lord North, who was the gentleman who rescinded the Townsend Acts um, in 1770, uh, passed the Tea Act. Uh, and the Tea Act was what the British thought was their silver bullet to finally get the colonists to pay for the French and Indian War. But as you and I both know at this point, the colonists don't always fall in line. Uh, this basically required colonists to buy tea only from the British East India Company, also known as the BEIC or the BIC, and it reduced the actual rates on tea. So it reduced the price of tea, but it put a tax on top of that tea, and it said you could only buy tea from that company. So that'd be like saying, you can only buy your hamburgers from Carl's Jr., but we're going to reduce the price of those hamburgers to a dollar, and we're going to charge a 50 cent tax. But you can't go to McDonald's, you can't go to Five Guys. You have to get your hamburgers from Carl's Jr. Um, and the, the colonists were not necessarily down with this. So, colonists resented being told who to buy their tea from, and so they started drinking coffee. So the American habit of being coffee drinkers actually started uh, as, as a result of the Boston Tea Party. If you go to Canada, if you go to Australia, countries that have strong British influence, tea is still a much larger part of their culture, uh, especially taking tea at noon. Uh, and that is something Americans pretty much rejected starting with the 
uh, Boston Tea Party. So on December 16th, 1773, uh, the Sons of Liberty, which was an organization that existed to resist the British, uh, dressed up like Mohawk tribesmen, um, and they boarded the British tea ships in Boston Harbor, and they did some damage, ladies and gentlemen. You may ask yourself, how much damage did they do? I have an answer for you. They dumped 90,000 pounds of tea into Boston Harbor. And that tea was worth a whole lot of money. And that money was owed to the British Empire. So you can probably guess where this is going. Uh, there is a lovely picture of what the Boston Tea Party might have looked like. Notice the Mohawk headdresses here. Um, and the people on the shoreline rooting it on. Not quite so sure there were that many people on the shoreline, but we'll have to see. And here is a History Channel summary of the Boston Tea Party. Back in England, the Colonial Rebellion becomes a national preoccupation. Over the next three years, Parliament keeps trying to impose its authority with new laws and new taxes. As each new law inflames the rebellion, it ends up getting repealed. Except for what? A tax on tea. The principle involved is that Parliament is sovereign. It can pass laws on whatever it wants. So we're going to just keep this one in place just because to assert the fact that we can do this. The Tea Act puts only a three penny tax per pound on the drink of choice for most Americans. It's hardly a burden, but in the current climate, a three penny tax still equals oppression. It's all that militant patriots need to strike another blow against the empire. Feathers and coal dust are their weapons. On December 16th, 1773, the Sons of Liberty enlist 50 men to darken their faces, stick feathers in their hair, and arm themselves with hatchets in a bad impersonation of Mohawk Indians. 5,000 people follow them down to Boston Harbor and watch as they climb aboard a merchant ship loaded with tea from England. With British soldiers absent since the Boston Massacre, there is no one to stop them. 342 crates of tea worth 10,000 British pounds are cast overboard. This wanton act of sabotage, which becomes known as the Boston Tea Party, will soon push the two sides to the brink of war. The British reaction was disgust and outrage. From a British point of view, you had an entire colony running amok. And the British government, after the Tea Act, frankly said, we've had enough. We've had enough of Massachusetts. And we're going to clamp down on them. And we're going to make Massachusetts an example of what happens if you defy the authority of Parliament. At that very same time, the British discover yet another outrage committed by an American, someone they thought they could trust. Benjamin Franklin. So, ladies and gentlemen, as you can see at this point, there's enough drama going down between the colonists and the British that this probably is not going to end well. And we are on the doorstep of a very significant event, not only in the history of our country, but in the history of the world, called the American Revolution. And at this time, it would be appropriate for you to review your notes and write a five sentence summary on the Boston Massacre and the Boston Tea Party. And as always, until the next lesson, this is once again, Mr. B, wait for it, signing off until next time.